Hello, everyone. This is JT Keating, uh, Vice President of Marketing for Zimperium. I'd like to welcome you to another webinar. We're really excited about this particular session. Um, for those folks that uh, are familiar with our format, um, we have uh, definitely taken uh, to heart the whole concept of webinar fatigue. Um, so one of the things that we're really looking forward to doing is making it a, a little bit of an interactive session, have some back and forth. Um, between a couple great panelists and myself and then um, get to a live demo as well so you guys can see it. So um, as you guys can see, hopefully you're in the right place. Um, this is the top three ways to protect uh, Microsoft Teams on mobile BYOD devices. This is something that uh, we and Microsoft have been seeing an awful lot of. Um, so usual quick perfunctory conversation will be about 30, 35 minutes worth of, uh, of content, including the demo. Um, at the end, if there's any uh, Q&A, then we'll field that. If not, then we will give you the rest of your day back. Um, archive version will be up uh, within a day or so, and we can make slides available to anybody who, who might be interested in it. Um, please do, throughout the session, uh, throw your, your questions into the Q&A um, section and capabilities, and then I'll be able to help facilitate and point those in the right direction at the tail end of the session. So, um, like I said, really excited about this. This is a red hot topic, um, has been a red hot topic uh, across the board in 2021. Um, and we're very excited to, to be doing this. I'd like to first uh, introduce um, our, our panelists, the folks that are gonna be helping us with this, uh, this whole thing. Um, the first one is our uh, esteemed guest um, from our, our, our friends up in Redmond, up in, uh, up in uh, Washington. Um, Sakshi Tawari is Senior Product Manager for Microsoft Teams, and she's going to be helping us with uh, some of the team-specific content. So, Sakshi, thanks for joining me. Thank you, Jody. It's a pleasure. And, and, and she's going to be joined with Mark Tinker, uh, who is a Senior Sales Engineer here for Symperium in the Americas. Um, and Mark will be uh, specifically spending a little bit of time actually showing uh, this integration that is that is fantastic. So, Mark, thanks for joining us as well. Thanks, JT. Pleasure to be here. So let's uh, let's let's dive in and and start explaining uh, a little bit about this. Um, the first thing is, uh, um, and I'm I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the concept of Cassandra. She was a, in Greek mythology. Um, she was cursed uh, with the um, the ability to prophesize everything, but nobody believed her. Um, I'm not sure if there were a lot of Cassandras around that actually talked about the coronavirus, um, you know, coming and in, in fundamentally changing everything. But last week uh, we did a uh, webinar on the top five crazy security stories, mobile security stories of 2020. Um, and we actually even kind of went out of our way to say, look, we're, we're not going to talk about the virus itself because that would be too obvious as a number one. Um, but a colleague of mine and I both ran down through each one of our top fives independent of each other. Um, it was kind of fun. You can go see it on our website if you'd like. We actually wrote a blog on it. Um, but my number one, which isn't really all that shocking, but my number one is fundamentally working, remote working and remote learning has has changed. It has, it has changed, you know, probably for, forever. Um, in terms of some portion of people will now be way more than they used to be, will be working remotely. Um, and one of the main things that everybody needs to do is they need to be able to communicate. Um, so Sakshi, can you first, uh, and I think everybody's got to be reasonably familiar with Teams because uh, you guys are doing an incredible job and you're, you know, literally, you know, blowing it up worldwide. But can you just kind of baseline for some folks uh, a few thoughts about Teams in particular. Yeah, sure. So as Judy mentioned that 2020 has really been a different year for us. And every organization now is trying to actually promote remote working. So when they start promoting remote working, every organization has certain set of goals in mind. They want their workforce to collaborate productively. They want people should be able to meet uh, seamlessly. Previously, a worker who was just a desk away from you is now should now just be a call away from you. At the same time, when they actually enable so many endpoints, they are concerned. Organizations are concerned about the security of uh, the, 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 the data that they actually own. 
and they want to make sure that everything that people access should be secure and data should not go in wrong hands. Next slide, please. And when we come to Teams, you get exactly what you expect. Teams on mobile, it's function fully functional on the go. Even if mobile is your only endpoint, you get everything that you need to know. You have your chats, you have your teams in one place, you get notified about everything which is happening around you at times. So, so you will not miss out on anything, even if Teams is the only endpoint for you. Cross device support is really fantastic in Teams. Uh, the call transfer from mobile to desktop, desktop to mobile is extremely seamless. So you can actually be proactive on the go. With that, we do have certain mobile first features. There are certain uh, goodness that mobile brings to your, uh, your, your portfolio. That is, if you wanna share images, it, it's really easy in mobile. So we do bring goodness of those kind of mobile first scenarios. At the same time, we do understand that there are cases where people do feel that they don't want teams on their mobile because it's gonna bug them day in, day out. So there are mobile first features such as quite hours where you can actually go ahead, block notification for a certain time period if you do not want to be bugged. So we do take care of that as well. In addition to that, we do have fully functional mobile platform where you can actually go ahead, enable your line of business apps and make Teams a whole offering for your organization. And you get all of this with the promise of Microsoft Trust. This platform is intelligent, secure, performance and reliant. You can trust on Teams. And that's not something that we are saying. These are the ratings that we got from App Store and Play Store. And if you see the ratings, we are rated highly among all our competitors. And if you actually look at the workforce feedback, people love how teams have literally transformed the way they work, how they are now living in teams for their office work. And it, it's really easy to actually go attend a meeting, call a meeting call another person and, and, and it's actually replacing their need to actually use SMS, WhatsApp and other messaging apps. So it's really, really good to see how people love Teams. No, no, that is, uh, that is, that is perfect. And like I said, you know, just around the, around the world, we're having uh, scenarios where people are turning to Teams and, and doing, and in, in interesting ways too, not just on Microsoft products. I mean, we're working with you guys on a remote learning Chromebooks initiative in the APAC region. So, uh, but, uh, but the focal point and the reason for the whole thing was Teams, right? Yeah, and, and that's the goodness of the product, JT, that it, it's not actually meant for one such audience. Like it's, it, our focus is not just information workers. We cater to the need of education industry, we cater to the need of retail industry and everyone around the world, they can use it. The UA is that simple intuitive that you do know what you're doing. Yeah, no, as an example, my, my daughter helps run a, a, a clothing boutique in Austin. And every year in Austin, they actually have a, a Christmas affair that's usually in the event center. Well, now it's all, it's all virtual and they're using Teams. They're using Teams as their, if somebody comes in and says, hey, I'm interested in a you know, particular outfit or whatever, they actually just throw up a Teams call. Um, and, and so it's, they're able to keep going and, and use all those unique, capabilities. So this, um, this webinar was, you know, uh, brought about by people saying, hey, um, specifically on BYOD mobile devices, because one of the things that happened as we've been discussing is overnight, everybody had to start working uh, remotely from whatever devices they happen to have. Um, and so BYOD, which was already on the uptick, uh, has skyrocketed. Um, so people are like, okay, so I want to be able to secure teams, as an example, um, on these mobile BYOD devices, but how do I go about doing it? Um, and so we have three kind of quick kind of instructional directions um, that actually shows how all these things come together. And so actually, would you mind talking about the first one was just some, some fundamental, you know, foundational blocking and tackling good hygiene type stuff. Uh, around um, Teams and the device that Teams is on. And then we'll step into the other two after that. Yep. Uh, so uh, I think as more and more endpoints start accessing your corporate resources, it becomes really important for you to get a visibility on those endpoints and to ensure that only the trusted identities are accessing 
your corporate resources. So there are solutions such as Intune that can help you with that. Uh, the second point is that you, you must make sure that the user who is accessing Teams is indeed the user who's allowed to access Teams. You can actually make sure set passwords. Apart from that, you can actually use Intune app protection policies such as um, setting a pin on the device so that whenever you are launching Teams, you are launching it with a pin. If you're concerned about data leak from one app to the other app, you can actually set up copy paste restriction policies where you mandate that from a managed app, a data should go to a managed app only and it should not go to an unmanaged app. So you can actually put in certain checks and balances in place that can help you ensure that the data that is being used and transferred from one app to other app is indeed secure. And in addition to that, there are certain basic hygiene for meeting options, like always use meeting lobby whenever you're inviting external guests so that you are, make sure, you are making sure that the people who should be in the meeting and who are joining the meeting are indeed the user that you invited. So these are very basic hygiene factors that you can start with to make sure that the content is secured on the device. That, that is perfect. And, and you started touching on a few things. Uh, you know, I think one of the main things um, when, it's, when it comes to this is whether you're on a mobile device or whether you're on a traditional um, device, part of the part of the the security around something like teams is making sure that that device has been protected as well teams itself already does a whole bunch of things great stuff and they've got whole um, documented uh, libraries on the microsoft site around say network encryption you know how are we encrypting the network you know across the data across the network to make sure that man in the middle eavesdropping can't occur so then the weak link is really the, the end point. Um, and so needing to do something to, to make sure that, that the end point is secure. Um, when we start talking about BYOD, which we'll get into a little bit later uh, in, a, in a quick second, there's issues about, hey, this is not our device. This is the consumer's device or the, the employee's device. What are we gonna do with it? But step one, um, well, actually step one was what we just talked about. Step two is, you actually need to be able to detect the threats that are actually hitting mobile devices, right? Um, and so, Mark, do you want to kind of run us through, you know, what are the main attack types? And then we'll also pivot to talk about our specific product, and then we'll put the two together. Yeah, sure, JT. So, you know, it's, it's, it's laid out here quite simply, right? So, um, you know, think of it as uh, D, N, A, and P, right? So, uh, you know, the, the vectors that a mobile device could potentially um, get compromised on would be the device itself, right? The device is uh, jailbreak when rooted. Um, you can also pick up network attacks, and, and that can be from uh, using public Wi-Fi, somebody trying to institute a man-in-the-middle attack, uh, di you know, diverge the individual off onto a uh, you know, a captive portal and, and get them to uh, either uh, give up their credentials or potentially you know, download uh, some malicious code that would then, you know, lead to some, some other things of a, a compromised device. Uh, another one would be phishing. Again, another way to divert somebody off to uh, some untrusted site, get them again to, to give up credentials or, or download some content. And then uh, the applications themselves, right, is that uh, unfortunately, uh, within an application, there could be some, some uh, you know, embedded malware, or uh, it could just be a risky app in and of itself, right? It could be that uh, that app did come from um, a trusted site, but, you know, the permissions that it has on the device are such that, uh, again, someone's able to collect your contact list or, uh, you know, the list of the websites that uh, you visited. So, again, you know, getting increased visibility, unnecessary visibility into what's going on with that device. Yeah, and these, um, you know, for folks that are relatively new to mobile, um, some of these like network attacks are, are pretty unique to mobile ordinarily because traditionally we spend a lot of time inside protected corporate firewalls, protected networks, on centrally managed devices and things on those lines. Even before COVID, mobile devices spent a huge chunk of their time outside of these protected networks, right? Um, and, and now when you layer in that this might be personally owned, you have to account for all these, you have to be able to detect all of these 
but you need to be able to do it in a way that is respecting privacy, right? Um, so, uh, Mark, can you explain a little bit about the the Xenine engine and kind of how it's how it's unique and and how it does protect privacy? Uh, and then we'll pop over to the the, the zip description real quick. Absolutely. So uh, Z9 is is the heart of the Zimperium solution. It is a, a, an engine, uh, and what makes uh, and, and differentiates that is that it runs on device. That engine is embedded inside the Zimperium app, which runs on the mobile device. So there's no need for a a connection to some backend cloud resource where uh, data gets sent off of device for uh, you know analysis somewhere upstream. Um, and that's uh, useful for a number of ways. Certainly from the privacy perspective, if the detection and the data is staying on device, uh, certainly you're assured that uh, privacy is not an issue, but also just from a security standpoint, right? Um, and, and you had made mention of it earlier, JT, that in the course of a network attack, uh, the individual who's instituting that upstream is gonna control that transport. So if they control the transport, they know that potentially the device they're attacking may be sending data off device for analysis somewhere upstream. It's very simple for them to just block that, right? So that detection will never get made because the package destined for the cloud to do um, you know, some analysis on never gets there. So right. from, from the perspective of a solution that must send it off, uh, you know, it, it, it's unable to do that detection. And again, being done on device with Zimperium, it's not an issue at all. No, that's, uh, that, that makes a ton of sense. One, one quick point on this and um, related to the conversation we were talking about with remote working and things on those lines, um, just for what is worth, one of the things that we've noticed since, uh, let's say from Q1 to Q2, we saw a huge spike in phishing and a huge spike in mobile malware, especially in and around COVID. So for instance, we saw a 6X increase in phishing attacks, um, Q2 to Q1 uh, or Q1 to Q2, largely because of, of COVID related. So briefly, we're not gonna go through this whole thing because we're gonna get over towards the demo side. This is the way that Zips work. So Zimperium is responsible. What we do is we protect enterprises against mobile attacks. And we do it in one of two ways. We either protect the employees and the corporation on the devices, or we have solutions where we can actually put our protection directly inside of mobile apps. Um, so the one that protects devices is called ZIPS, stands for Z Intrusion Prevention System. And you can think of it as EPP or EDR, if you're from the endpoint world, for mobile. Um, Gartner calls it mobile threat defense. We actually can identify risks on the devices and the apps, et cetera, and the networks you're on. We do active threat detection, then we remediate the problem. Sometimes we remediate the problem because of the nature of mobile. There are certain things we can do locally, like turn off a network, turn off disable Bluetooth, et cetera. There's some stuff on a managed device where we work with Endpoint Manager, for instance, from Microsoft, and we can have a whole suite of very user group dependent driven remediation options. Um, but then what we're gonna talk about right now is how do you do that world with a BYOD device, right? Because it's, it's a different beast. And then we can report all the data, including um, up to, for instance, uh, Azure Sentinel. Um, you know, we're tied into the, the XDR there. Uh, we talked about the fact that we're the enterprise leader, so we have multiple advantages fundamentally, but since this is not a zips pitch, we're just going to now move over and say, okay, now how do you how do you put the pieces together? Um, and and I, I can say categorically, I love the Microsoft approach to BYOD. Um, I, I love the approach that Microsoft is taking um, because uh, you know the fundamental problem with with BYOD on mobile is if you look at the messages that you have to that you have to go through, whether it's from Apple or Google whenever you download a, an MDM, a mobile device management solution, there are some very scary messaging. It says, this company can see your emails, this company can see your contacts, this company can wipe your device. And those are all the things that were put in place so that corporations, if for instance, you know, somebody uh, left the company or lost their phone, that you could take the company data off of it. But it's a scary set of messages that when it's my device, I'm like, no. 
Uh, and I'm, no, no, it doesn't work. But the approach that Microsoft has taken is really, really smart. And what it is, is it's mobile application management as opposed to mobile device management. In this case, what you're doing is you're actually impacting access to the app, not the whole device. So if certain things, if certain policies and the device becomes risky, again, it could be if somebody lost their phone, then you would not, that device would not be able to have access to those productivity apps. Um, and so it, it's uh, Intune, which Endpoint Manager, you know, was an uh, um, old system manager, system manager and Intune got combined into Endpoint Manager, but it's still called uh, Intune. There's actual in-app policies that, that can actually be triggered within these apps um, to be able to protect them. For BYOD on mobile devices in particular, I'm gonna step you through the, the steps here visually, and then Mark is actually gonna show it to you in the demo, but we felt it'd be a good idea to kind of visualize how these pieces fit together. In this particular illustration, it's Outlook, Mark's actually gonna be talk about Teams and Outlook uh, in the demo itself. So how does this whole thing work, right? Well, first thing, Zimperium Z console, that is our management console, cloud-based console, runs on Azure or you know, other clouds. But one of the things that's unique for us is we run our console on Azure, part of the advantages of doing all of our on-device detection. So our console integrates in directly uh, and syncs with AAD to make sure that we got all the user groups being fitting into the user groups that have already been established is a key part of us. We believe we should fit into the enterprise, not to have the enterprise fit into us. So everybody's already done all the work you know, on that side of things. So everything gets synced up. The first time that the user goes to access in this particular case, Outlook, once the company has decided it's going to protect its uh, devices with mobile threat defense, they are told you need to download the solution and you know different messaging and it's like hey we're here to protect you we're here to protect our devices the cool part about this is users usually don't have big concerns about putting antivirus on their machine right the big scary mdm message and everything is one thing but if it's like the company is providing you free protection for your mobile device okay makes sense so they go download it and then Let's say that Zips detects that there is a critical event based on whatever security policies people have. That information, all the forensics goes up to our console. Based on policy, let's say that that is now critical. The risk posture of the device is now set to high. Because of that, there is a block of the conditional launch of the app itself. So again, there's nothing in here about looking at your contacts, nothing in here about, um, you know, uh, any of the, you know, reading your email, nothing. It, it, all it is is you can't get access to Outlook or Teams, as Mark's about to show you, um, unless your device is not in a risky posture. Let's say that I'm on a, a bad Wi-Fi network, right? Until I move off that Wi-Fi network, I'm not going to have access to Teams, for instance because somebody could actually be eavesdropping on that call as a part of it. So we need to fix it, right? So they're basically told that once they fix it, then they go back to a normal state. So with that, um, I'm going to stop sharing. I'm gonna turn it back over to Mark so he can actually show some of the stuff we're talking about here. Um, I see some questions coming in. So feel free to please keep sending messages in and questions in while Mark's going and we will wrap it up. Let's see, JT, can you uh, see my device being shared? Yes, sir, I can. Thank you. Excellent, great. So essentially what I've got here is a mobile device. Uh, and again, the, the key here is that this is, is MAM or, or mobile application management. And uh, what will happen here is think of this um, regular end user, uh, there's no way, since this is not mobile device management, right? The end user will have to go download the apps. So in an instance of saving time, I've gone and downloaded the apps. Uh, one of the requirements too, 
to also do containerization of the, uh, the Microsoft 365 suite is to uh, have the Microsoft Authenticator. I've gone ahead, downloaded that, and I did sign in with that. So with that, I'll kind of walk you through here the workflow. So as you can see, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, I'm going to launch Teams. And uh, what it will do is it's going to, uh, to ask me to, to log in again, because this is not MDM. I, I can't push credentials or configurations to it. So uh, I have a rather long name in my, my test environment. So I, I pasted it in. And so uh, it's got my name. It's going to ask me for my password here shortly, which uh, I'll take the device away so that I can hide my password. Type that in. High security, Mark. I'm impressed. Hey. <laughs> What's your dog's name anyway, Mark? <laughs> my dog is named Ruby, <laughs> but that's not the password. <laughs> I guarantee you that. So uh, I enter the password. And so you'll see here, and again, this is all part of the workflow. Uh, I'm not really having to tap on anything special other than uh, the buttons that are made available to me here in the screen. Uh, again, Teams is now just asking, I've authenticated correctly. It wants permissions for the microphone. And so now what you just saw here, I'm gonna stop for a second. You saw here, as it said, uh, your organization is now managing this app. So in essence, the app protection policy had been pushed to the device. And in essence, what the, the app does is it resets itself. And uh, as the end user, I, I need to run it again. So that is in essence, the creation of the container and all of the policies that go along with it. And after we get through the, this video here, I'll actually flip over to uh, the uh, endpoint manager console. We'll go take a look at the Intune app protection policy. Again, containerization of the app, right? We can put in a, a passcode to enter the, the uh, Microsoft container. You know, we can put in place, as Sakshi had mentioned before, DLP type, uh, conditions so that uh, you know, we can prevent the cutting and pasting of information from a corporate app to a non-corporate app. And then what's key is, is what's making this possible right here is we're saying within our app protection policy is we require essentially a posture value for that device. And that's what's going to kick off sort of our next step here. So I'll restart the app here. And as you see here, what's going to happen and again, it takes a second. Mark, is the uh, posture value uh, the same thing when I was talking about changing device risk level? Is that what you're referring to as the posture value? Correct. You're, you're right. I, and, and I think technically in the console, it's, it, it talks about the device threat level. But in essence, just think of that as posture or it's synonymous with posture, right? Is before I can access that corporate data, Intune device manager, the endpoint manager, really just wants to know that my device is not jailbroken or rooted, doesn't have malware, right? It's not on an unsecure, uh, untrusted Wi-Fi network, right? It just wants to know that I'm in good posture. Right, and this would be for literally every protected app. And I think it's uh, one of the things for us to, you know, just kind of, uh, I think it's worth reiterating is the SDK for, or uh, into MAM, this capability that Mark's talking about is literally in every single Microsoft productivity app that would be the core of any BYOD initiative. Um, and then it's also provided to other apps like Acrobat and other things. So it's a, it's a great foundational approach to BYOD, including the fact that it's in Teams um, as well. So just, but the fact that I, I, I know I'm sounding like, you know, a fanboy, um, but it's true. The first things everybody wants to give access to on BYOD are all the productivity apps, including Teams. So it's that's why that's why we're so excited about this whole concept. So go ahead, Mark. Sorry about that. Ah, no, 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 please. Okay. So now, again, uh, I'm going to get asked to this point. Isn't my device is going to connect itself to uh, AAD. Um, again, it, it's not managed, but it, it will show up in the uh, Azure AD uh, console. And so now at this point, you can see it's saying, we don't have a posture for your device. So it's redirecting me to go get this Imperium agent, the app, install it, which I will do here.
Luckily, the Wi-Fi connection was pretty quick, so it came in. And then uh, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to go flip back over to Teams and I'll do the workflow from within it. So now it redirects me to open zips. And then zips automatically flips me over to the authenticator app to say which account am I going to authenticate with, which I chose. Now I'm just going to, at this point, I'm just going to agree to the T's and C's. Again, this is MAM, so I can't suppress any of this. Um, and then uh, I've got to go ahead and, and uh, uh, give some permissions. And then at that point, I have the, the uh, Zips agent is activated. Uh, the value has been reported back. It goes into uh, our console, which then gets transferred over to the endpoint manager console. And at that point, the, the value for uh, my posture, my threat level has been established. And now at this point, um, you know, I've just got to establish a pin. Again, that's part of the app protection policy. And I think I actually forgot what I had set. Tried my other one. And now I'm essentially in. which is great. Now, uh, the nice thing is once you do this with all subsequent apps that have the SDK embedded in it, I only have to do this once. So in the case of now, I'm gonna go ahead, I've downloaded Outlook. I'm gonna go ahead and run Outlook for the first time. And again, it's gonna say, uh, the nice thing is due to the hooks into the Authenticator app, it's gonna say, what account do you wanna enable this for? It already knows who I am. So I just go ahead and select that account. I'm not going to add any others. Again, we saw the app reset itself because the app protection policy was pushed down. I restart the app. I'm going to go ahead and, and acknowledge a couple of permissions here, specifically around uh, you know, the ability for it to uh, pop up alerts and messages for me. And I'm good to go at this point. So again, you know, subsequent apps of the of the Microsoft stack, um, I have that value in. So uh, very straightforward. The nice thing is it's sort of a wizard that will walk me through that process. And again, the nice thing is my device is now protected uh, with Zimperium and it's being enforced with that conditional launch component that we saw there with the Microsoft apps. Yeah, so and in my mind, there's, uh, there's two pieces um, to to this and, and Satchi, I would love you know your opinion on it on the part of this as well. It, there's there's two there's two scenarios, right? One is if there's something wrong with the device, if the device has been compromised, which on a network a, a, wi a bad Wi-Fi network, if there's malware on it, whatever. I, I want to make sure I can stop you from potentially getting access to Teams or Outlook or anything where you could be jeopardizing you know uh, corporate. Uh, you know, uh, safety and security. But then there's the other side, which actually I would think would be, you know, critical for you guys, which is not putting any friction in on the user if there's nothing wrong, right? You don't want to slow down. I would imagine a lot of your guys' great ratings and stuff along those lines. A large part of that probably has to do with this, how easy it is and how just streamlined it is. The fact that if there's nothing wrong with the device, there, you don't even notice a difference, I would think would be pretty important to the whole thing. Yeah, JD, and we do take care of all this. Like all these policies are checked when the app is launched. So once you're in the app, you have established that you are the right person, there is no attack available. And then you can access the resources without any friction. So we, we do put those checks and balances in place. And uh, the policy refresh also is Basically, we, we don't refresh all the policies every second or every minute. That happens if you already have policies, then we will refresh the policies in, uh, every 30 minutes. If you do not have any policies, then whenever you are downloading that for the first time, at that time, we'll try to download all the policies and put those in place. So in that case, we do take care of that. Your entire workflow that you want to do is kind of seamless. You do not feel that particular thing that there are stuff happening in the background. So, so user does not get a feel of that. Right, yeah, I think that whole user experience part is, is critical to this yep. whole thing. Uh, well, Mark, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the demo.
Um, so I'm going to see that we're about five minutes, uh, uh, 35 minutes at this point. We have a few questions uh, that have come in. And if anybody has any additional ones, um, please let me know. Um, first one is a, <laughs> is a bit of a branding question, um, which is what does Z9 stand for actually? Uh, Z is for Zimperium. Yes, it is. Um, and what about the number nine? It's actually not like a version number. Um, to, to be honest, I think that there's legend and lore about where the number came from, um, but it's just been our machine learning based uh, uh, branding and image uh, for quite some time. It's the framework for all of our um, machine learning. And, and I think it's important to note that we do all of our machine learning, actual machine learning up in the lab and the cloud and all that, again, billions of data points from all of our devices what we're doing on devices, machine learning based detection. So we're not actually machine learning on a mobile device, which would be very heavy, but that's that's the Z9 part. Um, uh, so actually there's a question for you. Um, regarding Intune, I understand that only cloud approach is available, no on-prem. Um, can you provide a little bit of clarity around Intune, Endpoint Manager, that side of things? So yes, Intune is cloud only, but Microsoft do have Microsoft Endpoint Manager as well, which supports on-prem through Configuration Manager. So, so Intune is part of uh, MEM itself. So there is a larger umbrella offering available, which enables people to do uh, device management for on-prem devices as well. Perfect, thank you. Uh, Mark, um, you ready for this one? Sure. Yeah, I'm, gonna put it, I'm gonna put it right, right across the plate. You know, I'm kidding. Uh, uh, can't uh, can't we do the Zips app deployment automatically? Uh, oh, can we do the Zips app deployment automatically, e.g., with Android Enterprise mechanism? Uh, certainly, you could, right? But in order to do Android Enterprise, you must have MDM. So that's kind of one of the the requirements on Android Enterprise, and and Android Enterprise is the containerization or the dual persona, if you will, on an Android device where I've got a, a company side and a personal side. And as an individual, I just can't go turn on Android Enterprise. I actually have to have my company or some sort of MDM and, and certainly Endpoint Manager, formerly known as Intune, has that capability to push down what, what's called the, uh, the work profile or inflate the work profile that has to be done by MDM. And absolutely, once you establish that business side of the, of the device, you can push down the Zimperium Zips agent. You can then um, enable or, or push down the configuration file to activate it essentially automatically, which is great. But um, that is an MDM play. It's, it's not necessarily MAM. Now, to go off on a completely different tangent with the SDK that the Microsoft app support, um, you can also do that type of, of MAM on top of MDM. They're not mutually exclusive. So you can do MAM with or without MDM. So again, just to make it a little bit fuzzy, um, you have that option. So there, there is some granularity there to, to do the application management and have the containerization, if you will, uh, on top of both. No, that is that is perfect. Um, so I don't uh, I don't see any other questions. Um, I would like to thank both uh, Sakshi and Mark for for joining us. Um, you know, kind of in, in conclusion of this whole thing, you know, from my perspective, um, and, and Sakshi, uh, I'll actually allow you to you know you'll have the blessing of getting to have the last words. Um, but but my uh, my personal thing is when I look at this and say, hey, we have all these people now working remotely. We have those people doing remote learning. How do we actually protect them and the organizations that they are working with, even on their personal devices? Um, and in my mind, this is a best, a best of both worlds scenario. You've got, you looked at the ratings that Sakshi talked about, you got the best conferencing software, and you've got the enterprise leader in mobile threat defense tied together through Endpoint Manager to be able to do these policies where it's not scary MDM stuff, but it's actually the ability to protect those sessions that the app is having against the real-time threats that were occurring. So in my mind, the, the punchline of the whole thing is the best of both worlds between Teams and Endpoint Manager and Zimperium provides this great solution. So uh, Sakshi, any, any 
last uh, thoughts or comments before we wrap up? Uh, so, Jerry, thank you for inviting me and uh, doing this, especially. I just want to say that you're absolutely correct that the goodness that this particular integration is big, uh, bringing for the organization that you can actually go ahead, provide access to your corporate resources to people without being worried about is are the devices secure. So, so that's what this integration brings in. So it, it, it's a good, like, it, it's a really good integration to literally think about it that way. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sachi. Thank you, Mark. And thank everybody for joining us. And uh, again, archived version of this will be up on the website within a, a day or so. And everybody have yourselves a great day. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.